is Germany having an identity crisis. With the far right further on the rise, massive street protests challenge the nationalist AFD party. Meanwhile, Israel's assault on Gaza is putting German social policy to the test amid complaints of suppression and censorship of anti-war voices. Can Berlin find a fair path forward? I'm Andrea Sanke, and today's newsmaker is Germany. The rise of the right has become a national trend in many Western democracies, but it's particularly concerning in Germany, where fascism deeply scarred the nation and the world just decades ago. The far-right Alternative für Deutschland Party, or AFD, has now become Germany's second most popular. But a few weeks ago, a meeting between certain AFD members and neo-Nazi groups was exposed for discussing plans to deport immigrants. Hundreds of thousands took to the streets to reject the party, but only an election will truly reveal if its popularity has declined. Meanwhile, Germany's center-left coalition is battling accusations of suppressing and censoring anti-war, pro-Palestinian voices, which many argue emboldens Islamophobia. Here's a look now at Germany's struggle to define its democracy. The rise of alternative for Germany has sparked a national debate. The far-right party stirring concerns across the political spectrum. But support for the AFD has dropped below 20% for the first time since July, after three weeks of nationwide protests. I say it clearly and harshly. Right-wing extremists are attacking our democracy. They want to destroy our cohesion. At a secret conference, these extremists discussed how they could drive millions of people out of our country, families who have lived here for many years and decades. This thought sends shivers down your spine. With each election, their message of nationalism and exclusion has found a wider audience, troubling many who see echoes of a fraught past. We are part of the people who don't let this policy be imposed from above, but we really think and work together to bring about change and make politics for the people. We want reason, reliability, order and security to return to Germany. A debate over banning the party has become fraught with complexity. While some argue it's a necessary step to curb extremism, others worry about the implications for free speech and political diversity. Because I have an immigrant background myself, I am worried about what will happen to my children and grandchildren when I am no longer around. Germany's Nazi-stained past is behind the urgency to combat the AFD's growing influence. But will a ban strengthen their narrative as victims of political warfare? AFD leaders say the discussions are anti-democratic and insist any debate should be over policy instead. Recent revelations of AFD members plotting mass deportations have shocked many, drawing disturbing historical parallels. And amid the domestic political turmoil, Germany's stance on global issues, including Israel's war on Gaza, are also raising alarm, with increased censorship marking a worrying slide toward authoritarianism. A crackdown on criticism of Israel and expression of pro-Palestinian sentiment has set off legal challenges over free speech and civil liberty. Yet the streets of Germany are alight with public defence of the spirit of democracy. From Berlin to the heart of Dresden, millions are rallying to show the world that Germany's fight against extremism is broad, deep and unwavering. As the nation grapples with its far-right resurgence, its commitment to confronting its past will be put to the test. So how will Germany define its democracy going forward? Well, joining me now to debate that are all from Berlin, Mohammed Hajaj, the chairman of the Central Council of Muslims in Berlin. Frank Hansel is an AFD politician and member of the Berlin State Parliament. And Zafer Meze is coordinator of the Seda Foundation in Berlin. 
Thanks all so much for being with me. Mohammed. I'll start with you. Help us understand where you see Germany today. How did one of the most progressive social democracies in the world that was so painfully aware of its fascist history end up seeing a resurgence of the far right? You know, one, one of, the, of the main reasons uh, are the uh, economic factor, uh, the economic downturns or, or stagnations uh, can of course lead to frustration and uh, discontent among the population. And if people feel that their economics, uh, that their economic well-being is under threat, they may turn to, uh, to political movements that, uh, that promise change. And even uh, if those changes involve nationalist or far-right uh, uh, ideologies, uh, the other main point is, is, of course, the fear of migration and the identity concern. The issue of immigration has been a, a significant uh, factor in the uh, in the rise of the far right movements all over Europe, uh, not just in, uh, in in Germany. And uh, the concerns about the uh, cultural identity, social cohesion, um, and the perceived impact of migration on jobs and public services uh, also can fuel support of the far right parties. Um, and and I also want to blame the, the political polarization that we uh, that we face uh, all over uh, Europe and especially in Germany. Let me, let me move on to Zafar though and see if, if you were able to hear how much you agree uh, with what Mohammed said because uh, there's the question of rather you know something has just gone wrong along the way whether it was the economy or other political issues or whether this ultranationalist sentiment was always really lingering under the surface, but they were careful to mask it. And now in the current you know, global political atmosphere, especially has allowed them to come to the surface. No. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I would say I agree with uh, Mohammed uh, when it comes to uh, the description of uh, the, the process and, and the, the, the what triggers uh, uh, the, the whole um, uh, process, uh, but uh, of course, I mean, uh, we have uh, we have uh, the, um, uh, the the political establishment uh, in uh, in uh, in Berlin, and we have the rise of the far right, as Mohammed mentioned, in Europe, especially in some uh, countries, uh, uh, Netherlands, uh, Germany, Italy, even in Eastern European countries, uh, and. Uh, um, and uh, this shows that there is a, um, a serious uh, upward trend in, in Europe. And uh, I mean, the, the, the reasons are also obviously clear. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, migration, economic uncertainty, cultural concerns, emphasis on national identity and political crisis are important factors mm. influencing the rise of the far right, especially economic insecurity and social injustice are other factors that have increased uh, the popularity of far-right parties, uh, especially uh, during the, the COVID period, the, the, uh, the Ukraine war, and, uh, okay. and, uh, uh, and in, in, in combination with that uh, economic uh, uh, um, uh, turmoil, turmoil okay. you know, that's, yeah. that's are, are, are the reasons. Okay. But uh, I would say, uh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I, let, let me get to Frank. We'll just kind of uh, get, okay. get one at a time here. Frank, because uh, I, I saw you disagree with some of what you heard. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, t you tell me, why do Germans like you? And why do you think you're actually misunderstood, in a sense, by the Germans who don't like you? That's, that's exactly the point. Um, you know, we are not, a far, I do myself or our party not regard as a right wing, a far right wing party. We are center right. The problem is that Chancellor Merkel, who governed 16 years, she moved the former conservative CDU to the left, to the center left, and almost transformed it to a Green Party. So actually, what we have is a reeling block of parties like from the left, the Greens, the Free Democrats and the SPD and parts of the CDU, which are an all, all party block and there was, was lacking an opposition. And we regard ourselves as one opposition. And the problem is exactly this. We are center right because we represent um, the point what Mrs. Merkel has shifted to the left. And so we actually call ourselves the only democratic opposition at the moment being confronted 
by all the other parties who go against us, with all the media, and especially at these moments we live today and these days, a massive campaign um, denominating as Nazi and all what you see all in the news. Okay, this is then, not Frank, true. Uh, Frank, what about that meeting then between mm -hmm. you know certain members of your party and those neo-Nazi neo groups in Potsdam talking about extreme immigration policy going forward in which you know some immigrants would uh, would be deported en masse? Yeah, this is not true. The, the term uh, deportation was never used. It's part of the campaign of the media. But let's put it like this. Yes, we are critical regarding mass, or as we call it, illegal mass migration. Um, and But it's not against, um, how do you say? It's understanding that it's an economic problem. It's not identity. It's far more an economic problem that's lacking the financial means in order to stabilize, or to keep stable our social system. This is the problem because we have a year about 300 to 400,000 uh, Germans or people leaving Germany, going to, to Switzerland, going to Canada, going to the United States or, or, or other countries where they know that their rents as their pensions will be paid later. And some of them of them do believe that Germany has no economic and technological future. This is our problem. Yeah? Mm. We, we got out of the nuclear energy. We have massive energy problems caused by the own government. And so we need this opposition. And that's why we are uh, elected or in, in the uh, for, forecast about 25 to 30 percent in the eastern part and about almost 20 percent yeah, in the whole republic. That's okay. actually the situation. One, one last sentence. We have these center-right parties in Italy. We have it in the, Mrs. Meloni as prime minister in Italy. We have it in France. We have it even in Portugal with the new group Chega. We have it in Spain with Vox. It's not a German problem. It's a European problem. And I think Mohamed and the other colleagues really addressed it quite fairly, actually. Yes, indeed. Okay, they addressed it quite fairly. Uh, if, I may, if I may intervene at this point, Go is ahead, it possible? Zafa. Yeah. I mean, uh, what I have to say about AfD, I partially agree uh, with my uh, previous speaker. I think we should fundamentally take the general political discourse in Germany into account in order to understand how the, the public um, uh, uh, sentiment we talked about, the, the uh, Muslims, etc., in Germany is created and framed. Uh, it would be too short-sighted, I would say, to only bash the AfD in this regard, you know? And uh, I think uh, also, as, uh, as, uh, as you, um, in your moderation, mentioned in your, class, uh, in your question to, to the previous speaker, uh, yes, uh, there was a meeting uh, which is now, uh, which is declared here as a, as a huge scandal, uh, and and uh, it was uh, published in a uh, in a in a news uh, uh, paper uh, or on the internet. Uh, but uh, it, it's also true uh, the 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 the, uh, uh, the framing of deportation is really not true. It was discussed about how to uh, how to how to do it in a way that. Uh, that uh, of course to get rid of the the uh, the, the refugees, uh, but mm -hmm. I really uh, would like to uh, to remember that uh, similar politics, uh, uh, similar policies regarding the uh, the uh, the uh, refugees, uh, we see in the program of the Christian Democrats. Uh, even Social Democrats uh, are ac accepting it. Uh, some parts, especially of it. in Denmark. I mean, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes, uh, and 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 look, uh, and, uh, several weeks ago okay. there was a cover, there was a cover of Scholz, the Chancellor, who uh, was quoted, "We will uh, get rid, or we will send all refugees as soon as possible." You know, uh, uh, at the forefront of of Spiegel, which is populism. You know, mm -hmm. it's not only AfD who have to be bashed. You know, you know that, that's we have to we have to realize we have to realize. Uh, Dear colleagues, we have to realize that uh, also the you know the the ruling parties like the the Greens or the FDP and the SPD and the CDU they are waving now and they are riding on this wave of uh, 
of right populism. Uh, Daria. I can look look what we what we differ uh, in, in terms of, of discussions with, uh, with 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 Frank Hansen, for example. You know the the symptoms that he's taking uh, the, 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 that he's talking about. They they are true. We have we have a, a lot of problems in in Germany uh, and, and towards uh, Europe uh, economic problems. We have problems with migration. We have we have problems with uh, uh, you know was with you know with the, with the far right and with all this stuff. Um, but but we have to know that society is developing. And the reasons for migration are global. The distribution of resources and wars are the reasons for migration. So when we want to stop people, and the, and the, and the term that was used was actually not deportation uh, in this conference, which was uh, which was made which was held in, in Potsdam. It was actually remigration. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can we? Uh, and and to be honest, of course, I I do not support this uh, this uh, uh, way of uh, thinking uh, because we have to realize. That the German society, that, that the demographical um, development of society and the demographical uh, pyramid of society is now, uh, you know, on the, on the other way around. So we right. need actually mm -hmm. migration in, the, in Germany. We need people who uh, who work in the in, in 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 all the fields. But the problem that we face now is the deindustrialization. That we uh, that we have now. Uh, well, you know, I have. Okay, I, 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 but, uh, but before I, you go I, too far, Mohammed, I mean, this this is what's so almost disconcerting right now is that we see these protesters coming out, and they're hundreds of thousands, and they are angry and they are scared. Yet we actually have the three of you talking in a very civilized manner about what the real issues are, and Mohammed, even you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you almost seem to accept that maybe the AFD has been slightly misunderstood, at least by the people that seem to think they are truly this extreme element that wants to bring fascism back. Yeah, but this is, I mean... Uh, hold Mohammed, on, Frank, let, let me get I, Mohammed, I Mohammed first Mohammed and then, yeah. then no, Frank, sorry. yeah. Of course, yeah, sure. Uh, look, I'm not a fan of the AFD and I oppose the AFD politically, of course. Uh, when, when we, when we uh, think about uh, the establishment of the, of the, of the AFD uh, like, uh, like 12 years ago, the AFD started at the, at the European critic uh, party, and they actually uh, evolved into a right, uh, right, right, right wing populist movement. Uh, you know, towards the the people who actually uh, run the EFD now. You know, when we when we listen to uh, to quotes of uh, of Björn Hecker and uh, and of and of other uh, people uh, working working in the uh, or, or engaging in the AFD, uh, of course. They, they, they have links to right-wing uh, movements. They have they have links to to uh, to uh, fascism, and I think the the AFD themselves they have to work to work against these kind of people. Uh, and if they want to return into, to the to the democratic middle, let's say, or to the democratic standard, they have to oppose these kind of people uh, in the uh, in the in the uh, internal discussions. But um, but but in my opinion, these kind of people, these right wing people in the AFD, they are actually now the majority. So the AFD in a, in a, in, a, in its whole is a right wing political party. Okay. Uh, al although al although Frank Hansel, uh, you know, he's I know I know that uh, that Frank Hansel, for example, uh, he's he's a part of the liberal. Uh, part of the uh, of the uh, AFD, but uh, but I have to say the when when uh, when people are are quoting the AFD uh, leading when they when they quote the leading members of the AFD they quote let's say let's be frank here they they quote like Nazi quotes to be honest when they when they talk about Muslims when they talk about about black people when they talk about Roma people uh, so this is this is not something which is um, the, um, democratically uh, acceptable in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a liberal society and okay. liberal democracy. Let, let yeah, me make a yeah, point let, here, let Frank please. go I ahead. Mean, go ahead, Frank. Yeah. I mean, this is really fair what you're saying, um, but what you said is correct. We are quoted, but who quotes us? It's the media. They scandalize everything what Hucker says or some of those. Um, they're not even leading on the federal level leading people, but they do not quote people like me or any so many of our almost now 40,000 members who absolutely have no no elements of fascism or uh, anti 
anti, anti uh, how to say, um, xenophobia, anything like this, we are still the same party which we founded 10 years ago. And do remember the mass migration problem uh, started in 2015. Of course, everybody in the political sphere had to react on this phenomenon. And then we really did see that all the parties make this welcome effort and nobody really thought about what is the economic impact? Uh, and as I say before, it's a mathematical equation. If we have 300,000, 400,000 people who pay into the system leaving. Okay. Yeah, we've heard that uh, argument. Getting I mean, that's one million uh, people getting back to the, the economics getting, of it's, it. It's a social effort. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but let me. Yes. If, yes. if we can, Frank, we're, we're down to our last minutes, actually. And I, well, I needed to bring up another issue right now. And, Frank, I'll sure. let you start on this one. Because okay. we have seen in the wake of, you know, Israel's assault on Gaza that Germany in particular mm -hmm. has cracked down on these, you know, anti-war, pro-Palestinian voices claiming the other kind of extreme uh, that, that they're somehow being anti-Semitic because they're, they're protesting against you know, the death really of innocent people in, in Palestine. So it seems like instead of anti-Semitism, there's this uh, Islamophobia now uh, that's raising yeah. its head in Germany. And your party, people think at least, embody that mm -hmm. Islamophobia. Yeah. Uh, do you I, see an imbalance there? No, no, I don't see any anti-Islamic movement. What I do see is criticism on on the parallel or on 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 the people we have who are Germans, who, who live in Germany, who was born even in Germany, many Palestinians, especially in Berlin, who went on the streets going against Israel. Um, this is understandable, but the the violence and the 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 outscream that the impact is that it had that has shocked not only us from AFD, but really all the politicians. And I do not see any counter reaction on Islamophobia. I don't see it really at all. And we, I do see the criticism um, on those um, anti, um, anti-Semitic um, uh, um, outbreak from some of the Muslims who live in, in Germany, but I do not see a generalized um, anti-Islamic sentiments in Germany, okay. uh, not even from, from our party, not at all. Even, I, well, please um, understand that we even going, having, going to have a Muslim party probably taking part in the European elections, uh, the DAVA, which is a new phenomenon. And this is quite interesting. So I think everybody who, who understands, who wants to live with us in any uh, participate in our social and economic life, everybody's welcome okay. and there's no problem. But we do not want Sharia law in Germany. That, of course, we do not want. And I think nobody wants that. Zafar, go ahead. I mean, uh, Frank, this is indeed populism when you say you don't want to have Sharia in, in Germany. Who mm -hmm. wants Sharia in Germany? Come on. I mean, Nobody. It is, yeah, but you are trying to frame it. Uh, sorry for that. So, uh, I mean, when we, when we look at the situation after the Gaza conflict, unfortunately, the escalation of the conflict uh, brought uh, not the best for, for the Muslims in, in, in Germany. Uh, at school, students are asked to take a position on the on these terrible incidents in Israel, Palestine, German authorities rightfully become more sensitive about anti-Semitism in these weeks, of course, but they should not neglect the equality, equally, I mean, important uh, problem of, of uh, anti-Muslim uh, sentiment. And what we are witnessing is kind of a McCarthyism, you know, the, which refers to the politics of, of fear, allegations, against us, which often against Muslims, turn against out us. to be... No, uh, since the Gaza conflict uh, against Muslims, as you remember, after the, the 7th October, AFD was the first party to uh, ask for huge restrictions uh, towards Muslims in Germany, you know, in the German no, Bundestag. No, no, that's you know no, no, that's not true. Come on, come on, I have read, uh, huh? I have read, it. come on, I can speak German no, because no, I, no I was a speech <laughs> part in the German parliament. <laughs> yeah. Mohammed, go ahead, look, look, uh, 30 have, seconds, go ahead, Mohammed. Have, we have, we have to know something. The Germany is simply in, uh, inconsistent in, this, uh, in, in its fight against the right-wing extremism. It's, it's actually hypocrisy. They see the legitimate uh, criticism of, of Israel as, as anti-Semitic, and they use actually the so-called Verfassungsschutz in Germany. Uh, you know, perhaps we as Muslim organization have, have this in common with the AFD, because we oppose the so-called Verfassungsschutz, 
because you know they 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 like they uh, you know they 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 frame the Muslim community in um, in Germany and they frighten them because everything that you might say uh, in uh, to criticize Israel and they, they criticize uh, you know the the their policies towards Israel uh, is is like uh, uh, stigmatized. Uh, and and it's actually and you have yeah, you fear that you that your that your mosque might be closed down because uh, because of a, of a of a foreign policy issue. So this is really crazy. To yes. Be honest. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mohammed I mean, uh, Zafar. Unfortunately, we yes. really are completely out of time. I would have loved to give you a, oh. a final word there, but uh, that is unfortunately all okay. the time we have for this. I'd like to thank all three of my panelists really so much for being with us. Our viewers, of course, for joining us as well. Remember, you can follow us on X, and do be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.